welcome to Golden Gate University School of Law's uh, housing webinar. I just wanted to, um, I see that a lot of the attendants that are on this webinar, only a few are applicants to the school. So I did just wanna do a quick little overview as to what's expected uh, when it comes to the application packet. A complete application, and we'll go through each one uh, very quickly, is a completed and signed application form, a personal statement, a current resume, an additional statement of interest, character and fitness addendums, letters of recommendation, of, co of course, a, a CAS report, a CAS um, packet. The first requirement is the completed and signed application form. So we do not take paper applications. You do have to go through LSAC, uh, fill out an application with them and then submit. And once you submit, we get the entire packet. There's two ways you can log on. There's the LSAC.org site. And then there's also a link to that site on our admissions page uh, at GGU for GGU law.ggu.edu. Um, so there's two ways you can get there. The personal statement, there's three prompts that were given on the application itself, but I do want to recommend that you follow instructions on page limit font um, and the little statement that you need to provide at the bottom saying that you wrote the personal statement. This is a uh, application, yes, but you do want to show that you're capable of following directions like you would if you had filing requirements of the court. It's all kind of uh, an exercise or pre-exercise before getting admitted to the bar. Definitely want to be as authentic as possible. You never want to write anything that you believe the admissions committee is going to want to read. Uh, so just be true to yourself and be pretty genuine about what you say and, and provide. A current resume, you do want to follow a very rigid structure. You want to make it as condensed as possible while still having relevant information. You want to work your resume so that the structure is easy to read because typically um, an average resume gets about six to eight seconds worth of glancing over, especially by a recruiter. And although the admissions committee is going to look at everything you submit, you do want to format your resume to be its most effective format, um, meaning you want to be consistent with the fonts, you want to be consistent with the spacing, you want to be consistent with the language. Uh, so present, present tense for current position, past tense for previous positions. You just want to make it as ready as possible to essentially send out to admissions and potential job placement. Additional statements of interest. It's not required, but uh, applicants usually submit this if they feel like they their personal statement is not enough to really convey who they are as an applicant and to really convey kind of what they've gone through in life that would make them a good candidate for law school. So we've received diversity statements, we've received um, kind of explanations as to what brought the person from before to now in their interest in law school or maybe a specific field of practice that someone wants to get into. That's what you want to use the statement of interest for so that um, your application is a little bit more uh, complete in terms of presenting who you are. The character and fitness addendum, this is not uh, optional. It is mandatory if you click yes on any of the section nine questions under character and fitness. Um, I know that it only asks for what happened, how it was resolved, and specific dates, but I definitely suggest that you provide more than that. Maybe what you've learned from this event in your life, uh, how you handled it, how you've grown from it. Um, anything to kind of show uh, progress. Uh, the admissions committee always says that 
what you did is not necessarily what's going to stop you from getting into law school or being offered admissions. It's more how you handled it. So definitely do provide a little something more, a little bit more substance when you're providing an addendum. Letters of recommendations. You never want to ask people like family members or friends or similar acquaintances. You, you do want to ask professors. You want to ask present, past employers, um, anybody who can really speak to your work ethic and workability would be the best candidate to ask. Um, I've had students submit letters of recommendations and the letter of recommendation essentially says, I told the student I'm not the best person to write this, but they insisted anyway. So it does, it definitely does come through if um, the, the recommender is not somebody who's essentially on your corner or somebody who knows you well. And the last but not least is your CAS report. This is a collection of transcripts, uh, LSAC scores, any of the quantitative type stuff that you would need to submit to get considered. Uh, LSAC will be the one to kind of gather all the transcripts that get submitted and all of the LSAT scores if you took more than one and put them in a little report. Um, we also get information about your undergraduate university, your degree, uh, the university where you received your degree, a little bit of statistics on the school um, and overall performance so we can evaluate more accurately you as a whole. Okay, so on to the actual webinar, which is about housing here in the Bay Area. Um, I know that the webinar is scheduled for about an hour, but I definitely don't think it's gonna take that long to go through this whole thing, unless of course there's a ton of questions from applicants um, or attendees. So first I'm going to go through the San Francisco neighborhoods and then I'm going to go through the East Bay neighborhoods just to kind of, especially if you're not from the Bay Area, you definitely do want to get acquainted with the location. Um, I don't know if you guys can see my cursor, but Golden Gate is somewhere close to where this um, pointer is and it's, it's very close to it's about one block away from Montgomery BART station, but it is in the south of market section. Um, some of the more popular neighborhoods that people tend to live in is um, the Mission, the Castro, um, the Richmond. So when looking at locations here in San Francisco or neighborhoods here in San Francisco, you definitely want to look at the amount of time it's going to take you to commute in addition to how much time it's going to, or how much it's going to cost in terms of rent. And then also you wanna look at space because uh, one option that you have in terms of making it a little bit more affordable is getting yourself a roommate uh, and sharing the expenses that way. So uh, there's, I didn't do all of the different regions in San Francisco. I just did some of the major ones, like the first, it'll, it'll go in chunks of three or four. Um, it's about 15 to 20 minute commute time from Castro to Montgomery, Chinatown to Montgomery, the Tenderloin or Civic Center to Montgomery and Mission to Montgomery. And then you go a little bit further out in the Haight and Ashbury, Japantown and the Marina, you're looking at about 25 to 35 minutes commute. So all these times you want to keep in mind are not the exact times that it's going to take. Uh, sometimes there are delays on the train. Different causes for delays could be a medical emergency or it could be a, like a electrical issue or a technical issue with the train itself. So you do always want to plan a little bit of ahead in terms of um, any delays that might come up. So again, like I said, things you want to consider is the amount of time it takes to commute with a, a kind of juxtaposed with the amount of rent that it's going to cause the cost. Um, commute in the Bay Area is relatively straightforward. Um, so you don't really have to, to worry about too much in terms of jumping trains or 
uh, I'm sorry, switching lines or um, switching directions. It's more back and forth essentially, and I'll show you the map of it later on. Um, in San Francisco, okay, so now that we've talked about commute times, these are rent ranges, ranges from uh, summer of 2018, to, and they're for one bedroom apartment. So as you can see, the closer you are, to uh, the financial downtown district, the higher the rent. You're looking at about $3,000, $4,000 for a one bedroom apartment. And then of course, um, the further out you go, uh, let's say inner Richmond, outer Richmond, the rent is a little bit more reasonable, um, especially for this area. I know 2,500 might not seem very reasonable, but it's um, relatively, reasonable for the bay for sure um so again you want to consider if it takes maybe 40 minutes to commute from wherever you're coming from but it's a lower rent that might be more feasible or doable in terms of finances than it is to be living somewhere closer like civic center where the rent is a little higher or maybe even the financial district where the rent is definitely higher now, those are all San Francisco. Um, there's definitely w different ways to get into San Francisco. So if you were to leave, the best advice that I could possibly give is to not essentially live in the San Francisco County um, if you're looking for, for rent that's a little bit more affordable. Um, you want to look outside, so you want to look in the East Bay, and there's different ways to get into San Francisco. There's uh, the ferry, which goes through Marin County and Alameda County. So there's two different directions that the ferry comes in. Um, <clears throat> there's obviously car. Uh, there's two different bridges that come into the city. There's the Golden Gate Bridge, which I'm sure everyone is familiar with. And there's also the Bay Bridge. Now, I highly don't, I really don't recommend driving in. Um, parking is a bit of a nightmare, especially where Golden Gate is located. It's so central um, that it's hard to find parking. And if you if you were to find parking, parking is expensive. Um, so as much as possible, just because we are only one block away from Montgomery BART, I definitely suggest um, using the BART system or using the Muni system or even using the bus system to get in uh, to campus. It's a, it's a lot more time um, friendly and it's definitely a lot more wallet friendly. Okay, like I had said, my best advice is to not really stay in San Francisco if you can, if you're looking to be a little bit more friendly to your wallet, you want to live in the East Bay. Um, so East Bay neighborhoods, you're looking at things like Hayward, Oakland, Berkeley, El Cerrito, Emeryville. There's a ton of different neighborhoods and some of them have their own flair and their own style. So you really do need to do your research if you're looking for a particular vibe um, and where you're living. Um, but there's a lot of options out there and a lot of them are pretty commute friendly. Hopefully this link works. Perfect. Okay. So I this is the commute time that it takes to get to um, Montgomery BART station. So you're looking at 12th Street, Oakland. You're looking at Mission, 19th Street, Antioch. Um, and it, it kind of just varies. Hold on just one second. I'm getting a little notice. It says the screen sharing has been paused. Let's see if I can do this again. Okay, a lot better. Um, so the commute times to Montgomery BART station. Like I said, Montgomery BART station is the BART which stands for Bay Area Transit. And um, 
these are the different commute times from the different stations to Montgomery BART. So whatever commute time you're really comfortable with um, would essentially be the area that I would suggest you, you start looking under. Um, for example, Richmond is about 35, 36 minutes away. Uh, Concord is 44 minutes away. And again, like I had said about the commute times, these are averages. Um, you, this is really not taking into consideration the um, medical emergencies that come up or the technical emergencies that happen with the train's operating system. Um, so definitely take it as a estimate of how long it'll take, um, not necessarily what will actually what it will actually take. Okay, so let me see if I can share another screen. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, these are all the different East Bay neighborhoods. And when I keep talking about these East Bay neighborhoods, I'm actually referring to uh, the BART station, right? Actually, you know what, before we talk about BART, let's talk about pricing. I'm not gonna go through the different neighborhoods, but I, um, I will go through some of the bigger ones um, or the more um, viable options. For example, Berkeley, uh, about 2% of the, and this is statistics that I got from um, like a market analysis of the Bay, about 2% of apartments, one bedroom apartments that are on the market are within the 1,000 to 1,500 range. 9% are about 1,500 to 2,000 range, and then 89%, so a higher majority in Berkeley is over 2,000, um, and that's looking at a one-bedroom apartment. So, of course, the further Berkeley has, University of California Berkeley, so, of course, the further away you are from campus, the more friendly the rent is going to be. And then you've got places in Oakland, 1% um, of the rental properties on the market is uh, between the range of 700 to 1,000. 7% 7 is 1,000 to 1,500. 22% is 1,500 to 2,000. And 70% is over 2,000. So that's a little bit more friendly in terms of budget. Um, but of course, it's Oakland. So you do want to be careful which neighborhoods you go to. Everyone, ha everyone thinks that Oakland has this reputation of being a really dangerous place. But just like anything else, you just have to be mindful of which neighborhoods or apartment complexes you're looking into. And at the same time, you know, if you're traveling at night, then you, you want to be aware of your surroundings. Don't be on your phone or any of that. But Oakland is a really great place. I personally love Oakland. Um, and I spend a lot of time there, especially in their downtown area. And I have a lot of friends who live uh, in Oakland as well. Uh, St. Leandro is a little further out. 4% um, of the uh, apartments on the market are about 1,000 to 1,500. 48% are 1,500 to 2,000, and then the remaining 48% is over 2,000. So again, um, it's a little bit more affordable in San Leandro. Of course, it's a little a little further out than Oakland. Um, it's about three stops in. Um, but again, the commute is not that bad if you're just sitting on a train. Um, Alameda is its own essentially little island. So if you take the BART, you do have to take, there is a little bit of a, um, commute to either cross the, a, a tiny bridge or go under the tunnel. Um, so commute for Alameda is a little bit longer, but the rent is re relatively similar. Um, you're looking at 1% 1 with 700 to 1,000 in rent. 7% of what's available on the market is 1,500 to 2,000, and then 93% is over 3,000, or over 2,000, I'm sorry. Last place I'm gonna look at is Walnut Creek. Walnut Creek is a little further out. Yes, it's actually past the Caldecott Tunnel, but 25% um, of the rental market, it's a very nice neighborhood, number one, and number two, 25% uh, of the 
rental market is between 15 to 2000. Um, so that's definitely a relatively good range for such a nice neighborhood to live in. Um, this is essentially what I've been talking about in terms of uh, location. So Golden Gate University is going to be at the Montgomery Street BART station right here, right after Embarcadero. And so anything really along the BART line from Richmond all the way down to South Fremont and Antioch or Dublin even, um, it's relatively easy to commute in from. It does take longer the further out you go, but it's one single train. And if you start out further in the uh, stops, then you essentially get a seat. So it's definitely something, if you're not gonna be living in San Francisco, looking on the East Bay and looking along the BART line, is definitely something that I highly recommend. Um, again, the thing that I had uh, put on the screen with the different commute times uh, that is available on our, we sent out an email to a mass number of people and it's available on our site uh, for you to kind of gauge what commute times you're comfortable with. Okay, so I do have a few tips when it comes to looking for housing, um, the first one is definitely be decisive and proactive. Here in the Bay Area, housing is in high demand. Everybody's looking, everybody's ready to sign a lease. So you never want to really be, you never want to wait too long in contacting a landlord or contacting a property manager. And you definitely, if you've seen the location and you like it and it's within your budget, you, de you definitely don't want to sit on the decision too long because um, you might lose out uh, on an opportunity. I am a big proponent of Craigslist. I know a lot of people are very hesitant of Craigslist, but like everything else, you have to be smart about using it. So whether or not you're looking for an apartment on there or you're looking for a roommate on there, you do want to take safety precautions. Um, apartments that are too good to be true, like for example, the pictures are gorgeous, but the rent is ridiculously low. You definitely want to be wary of those. Um, you want to be wary of if they're, um, at it, like let's say for example, you're looking for a roommate. Uh, you want to meet them, him or her, in a very public place. You want to meet him or her in, in daylight. You just want to take precautions as to kind of um, using Craigslist because the, it does have um, it does have a reputation of not being such a great site. But you can find gems on there if you're just if you're just quote unquote smart about how you use it. Uh, use Facebook. So every admitted student does get invited into the 2019 entering class Facebook page. So these are everyone who's invited on there essentially are newly admitted students. We do invite a couple of current students and of course the admission staff is on there. So those are resources for you to have. But essentially your whole network for your entering class is on that Facebook group. So that's a lot safer way of finding a roommate than let's say Craigslist because these are people who are entering with you. So if you wanna put it, put a post out there saying you're looking for a roommate, this is the areas you're trying to, to live in, um, it's a lot more effective at finding something uh, using the Facebook page. And then not only using the Facebook page, but you also wanna use your network. So uh, let's say for example, I'm on the entering class because I'm on the admissions staff um, and I hear about a friend of mine who's subleasing their apartment or leasing their apartment something um, for a year. Of course, I'm going to put it out there and then that I'm already in your network. So essentially, you want to use your networks to kind of leverage what is in my circle and then kind of take advantage of that opening or message me saying, hey, I saw that you have a friend who has an apartment available, I'm looking for an apartment. You know, just, it kind of goes in with the whole proactive and um, aspect of 
the tips. Use your network because there are people who know more people than you. Um, and from them knowing people outside your circle, your circle grows as well. And then the last tip, of course, is to research. Um, you want to look at the different neighborhoods. You want to look at what's the general rent range in that area. You want to look at activities that you can do in that area. Because obviously you do want a place to kind of unwind um, and relax. And then at the same time, you want a place that is um, conducive to your studying for law school, right? Something that's relatively quiet, but not too quiet. Um, kind of finding that good middle ground. Personally, I really like uh, Berkeley. I like Emeryville. Um, San Leandro, Oakland area, but again, it's all about your preference and what you can afford and essentially what you're looking for in an apartment. If you're not really a person who cooks, then why do you need a big um, kitchen? Or if you don't mind sharing space um, with someone else, then getting a roommate is definitely a good option. But definitely just do your research um, and make sure you, you're careful. Um, with finding an apartment that's fitting for you. And maybe don't sign a lease that's incredibly long so that if you change your mind after your 1L year, you have the ability to move once you're more familiar with the neighborhood and the area. Um, and then, yeah, so I think that's it. Um, if anybody has any questions, I did open up. I'm having a hard time hearing um, audio from anybody. So I did open up the chat room. Hopefully you guys um, can send your questions in there. If the question, the question and answer feature of this webinar is not working, then I would be more than happy to answer questions uh, through email. You guys can send it to me after the fact. Um, so yeah, I wish you, I'm not really getting any questions. So I, I do wish you good luck in finding housing. I want to wish you congratulations if you're in and hopefully we see your applicants application if you're not. Um, and if you have any questions, I am more than happy to answer anything that you guys have about housing in the Bay Area. Okay, have a good day. Bye.